Hi, I'm、uh, Forrest Zhang. I'm associate professor of sociology at the School of Social Sciences. My research is about contemporary China, and I do research in several fields. But the most important one, or the field in which my work has been the most influential, I would say, is agricultural development in rural China. In the mid 1990s, an、uh, influential scholar in the U.S. wrote a book about、uh, who will feed China. And、uh, his argument, his name is Lester Brown, and his argument is that、uh, with China's huge population and increasing living standard, Chinese people will consume ever more food, and、uh, there is certainly just e- not enough、uh, resources within China to meet that demand. And that also means that China will have to go out to the international market to buy a lot of agricultural products, and that will cause disruption to the international agricultural market. And uh, uh, the Chinese government is certainly keenly aware of this challenge, and it has always been its tradition to maintain a high degree of food self-sufficiency to feed its own population. Right. So to answer the challenge of who will feed China, the central government has uh, uh, put in place a, a, a whole set of policies, including. A, land, a very strict protection of farmland, the so-called red line of、uh, farmland,、um, but still it faces the challenge in the sense that farmers in China do not want to do farming、uh, because they are more、uh, incomes or more money to be made in other industries. So what we have seen in the past three or two decades is that a massive exodus of rural labor into urban industry. So I would travel to the Chinese countryside, to these villages, and talk to farmers, talk to the uh, uh, village officials, talk to other business people who are doing their business in the countryside, and trying to find out、uh, how is the agricultural production done, and then, of course, then what is the impact of the、uh, transformed agricultural production. Traditionally, land is closely connected with your urban. Household registration, and there's a lot of restrictions on who can have access to rural land. But in the past two decades or so, this linkage between your rural household registration and、uh, land access has been gradually loosened, or to the extent it has almost decoupled. So in today's China, anyone can have access to rural land. You can rent farmland from farmers and then you know do agriculture. And in the past, that wasn't possible. So some of these urban corporations realized this opportunity and started to go into the countryside and organize large-scale corporate agricultural production to directly supply to the consumer market, to the supermarkets in Chinese cities. At the same time, some of the rural producers, the family farmers, they also realized that this changing demand, and they have scaled up their production in various ways, including. Renting land from the neighbors, including organizing into cooperatives, so that they can supply large quantity of agricultural products, and they connect with supermarkets or sometimes connect with the traditional wet markets, which still exist in a lot of Chinese cities, to supply to the urban consumer. For those farmers who stay in the countryside, stay in agriculture, many of them. Because of the relationship with these corporations, they have been able to shift from growing grains such as rice and wheat into growing a more value-added、uh, crop such as vegetable or fruits. And of course, the corporation benefit from that, but the farmers, because of this upgrading of their agricultural production, also benefited from that. We need to rethink about the rural community in a different light. Traditionally, we think of rural community as somewhat backward, a closely knit community of、uh, highly homogeneous、uh, uh, population, farmers doing small-scale farming. But in today's rural China, the rural community has been transformed beyond recognition. It's no longer a homogeneous population.、Uh, people are. De- relying on different sources of income for their livelihood, people are engaged in different occupation, and then in this new context, we need to think about, you know, what is the social fabric that is、uh, holding this、uh, community together? What are the challenges? What are the issues of division and inequality?、Uh, and it's we have to understand,、uh, you know, social cohesion, social inclusion and exclusion in this new social context, and that poses a, a lot of challenges. For the policymakers and also for、uh, scholars, so I think overall,、um, the the entry of、uh, external capital into、uh, Chinese agriculture has been beneficial to、uh, farmers.